What's up guys, it's Shift here with my BFBB glitch exhibition. This is my donation center for SGDQ 2017. And I decided for the first few tricks of this exhibition that I wanted to keep them beach themed because it's SGDQ, and I thought that'd be appropriate with the beach tricks. So we're gonna do some stuff on Google Goon first. We're gonna start by getting a cruise boost here. And a cruise boost, for those of you who don't know, is a frame perfect trick activated by using the bubble bowl and the cruise bubble on the same frame against a platform with this precise angle, depending on both of those things, you can get a really fast boost that makes you run faster. But that isn't the fastest we can go. We can actually go even faster by abusing the game's platform mechanics when things are spinning. So by this platform moving faster, we can get a cruise boost off of it and it pushes us even faster than we'd normally go with a normal cruise boost. So let's try to get that now. All right, that is a fast cruise boost now we have. So as you can see, we're moving at light speed and even when we're just standing like that, we're moving faster than we normally would just walking. Now I'm gonna show off a cool trick we can do with a trampoline here. If you slam on a trampoline in this game, it launches you at an insane height. And we can actually use that to get up here on this platform. That you normally have to pay this clam, which is a function of toll booth essentially. You have to pay the toll booth to get up to that usually, but we can skip it by doing that insane launching strat. This insane launching strat. Now, we can do another cool trick with this called the sponge glide. This is the Gulagoon Pier sponge glide with a faster cruise boost, so we're gonna move at faster speeds and it's a lot more entertaining. It's kind of like looking at the game with a free cam, essentially. When the game detects that you're stuck but it can't keep pushing you farther down, it causes you to get this, this state where you're just floating. And if you have a cruise boost, you can control where you go with it by facing in different directions. Now normally you'd be able to go out of bounds here, but I had the hand enabled for other tricks we're going to show. But just know that you can actually go out there and walk on all the scenery, it's pretty cool. But we don't have time for that. Now what I just tried to do there was a bubble bowl boost, but I got pseudo RNG'd so it didn't work. I'll explain that later. But we're going to do some tricks in the sea caves now. So unlike the pier, which we don't have time for, we can actually go out of bounds here in the caves. So right here we can use a technique called L clipping. When you mash your precisely hit, depending on what kind of a wall you're trying to clip through, when you, when you mash your precisely hit the L button when you're clipping through a wall, you can actually force SpongeBob to be shoved out of the wall. And that just causes you to go out of bounds sometimes. So now we're walking on water, call me Jesus. Because there are no hitboxes out here on the water, excuse me, the goo, because we're underwater, gotta call it goo. Because there's no hip, there are no hitboxes on the goo out here, we can actually just walk on it without drowning. Yeah, elk clipping works because, um, by the way, these castles out here are all solid, and the bridges are solid too. L clipping works because the game tries to force you into a position. Oh no. L clipping works because it tries to port, the force you into a position where the cruise bubble can be activated, so it'll just force you out of the wall sometimes and make you in a standing position. And as you can see, everything's unloaded, not even rendered out here because it's just background scenery for out of bounds. And funny enough, if we actually enter the sea caves here on this side, that's where we started, by the way. We just went all the way around. If we enter on this side, we actually appear back out here again. You would expect us to go in there if you're just watching without reading the text box. You'd think, oh, okay, we're on this side, we can go in through that way. But we actually just appear out here. And as you can see, all the objects are rendered now because we're inbounds again and we're in a different area of the map. Okay, so now we're going to show off bubble ball boost jumping. This is a pretty precise trick that we're about to do here. It's a frame-perfect jump. That's activated. Well, the jump isn't frame-perfect, excuse me. The bubble bowl shot is frame-perfect. So if we activate the bubble bowl on the first frame that we're active out of being grabbed by the hand, that drags you from out of bounds, we can get an insane launching speed that depends on many factors, such as how long the game's been booted up, where you were dragged out of bounds, what, where you were facing when you dragged out of bounds, what we were doing, where the 0, zero, zero starting coordinates set in the game's loading files are for this particular map, where you were checkpointed, 
a lot of different factors go into this. So it's kind of, it's pseudo RNG where it can't really be controlled. It's just kind of cool to do if you're messing around. There are some other bubble ball boosts that are viable, that used to be viable in runs. However, they've been routed out for faster strats. So there are currently no uses for it, but maybe someday there will be, who knows. So I'm gonna attempt to get this now. It's a frame perfect input when I spawn in. Okay, that time was the pseudo RNG. Sometimes you get that when nobody can explain why it happens. It's just, you just don't move. I call it a dud. So we're gonna try to get it again. I got the right frame, but we just got pseudo RNG. That time I just missed the frame. All right, there we go. That's a bubble ball boost. See so the piers out here where we just were? Boom, bubble ball boost jump. And now we're out of bounds, just floating endlessly. There's some pretty crazy angles you can do with it, and some cool applications for it, but we don't have time for all of them. I have some other ones on my channel though, some cool stuff. So now I'm going to show off a new route that I made for the 100% and 200% categories in this game. This is the Campers and Crystals route for Kelp Caves. So in some tricks that were recently found in the community, some by myself, some by others, I was able to put together this sequence. maybe a little bit over a month ago. It's fairly new, but I don't run longer categories, so I just decided to do it for fun, just to help out the community a little bit. I just wanted to show it off because it is pretty cool movement. So normally we have to go past these gates that are activated by buttons to get these crystals, but we're not, we aren't gonna do any of that. Enough clips were found in this game for us to be able to skip those gates and just clip out with L clipping again. And get this crystal from out of bounds. Now we're gonna do camper skip, which is a pretty new and pretty hype trick. But first, in this sequence, we have to do another precise jump to get another crystal. Alright. See how long it takes me to get this. I'm trying to land on this leaf here. This little piece of kelp. There we go. Alright. And we can just boost our way up here and get this crystal. Normally there's a puzzle you have to go through to get all these crystals, but we can just skip all of it with tricks and stuff. Now here comes Camper Skip. All right. Okay, I missed the checkpoint, that's fine. We can just go back and try it again. This trick is extremely precise. Nobody who runs the longer categories does it in runs yet. This cruise boost needs to be redone, hold on. Not to mention the rocks in here are kind of finicky. They're pretty tough to cruise boost on consistently. All right, there we go. So now we drowned in this weird abyss and we suddenly appear in here. <laughs> so we can just go ahead and grab this camper and the crystal. Now normally there's a clip that you can get back into the map around right here. However, um, I missed that clip, so there's a backup strat that it looks even cooler. That's the one that you saw just now, where we drowned in the abyss. So same effect, it's just a little bit slower. Now I'm going to show off a really cool skip that's... I found it more recently, but I've been trying to find a use for it. This is called Clam Skip. Now for so long, the BFBB community has been trying to wonder, like, what if it's possible to skip the paying this toll booth, the clam, in Mermelair? It's really expensive, it costs 2300 shiny objects, which is a lot. It's a lot of grinding to get it. 
if, and it saves a lot of grinding if you don't have to do it. Now there is a way that I found to be able to do this, and that is by doing frame perfect slide jumps. It's it's hell, but it's all right though. We can we can do it as a trick because it isn't viable yet, not because it's too difficult, but because it's just slow in the categories where it may possibly be viable. It's still too slow to use, so I'm gonna try to do it for you guys. It requires a frame perfect jump after you grab the slide, and then frame perfect jumps consecutively up the slide after you get that frame perfect jump. Now you can just mash for the um, the frame perfect jumps up the slide after you get the ledge grab, which is what I do because it's um, it's more consistent, but it is pretty tiring. So this is going to be clam skip, and oh no, might take me some time to get it because it's pretty difficult. See, if you if you do frame perfect jumps up the slide, you won't get the tongue to come out because in this game, when if you jump on a slide, the instant that you touch it, you don't start sliding and you just keep your momentum that you would have just from walking. But if you do it the frame after, you start sliding and your direction changes. So if you're doing frame perfect mashing, it's really difficult to control it. But if you're just doing frame perfect jumps, it's technically faster. However, when you do that, it's a lot more precise. Alright, there we go. And that is the button that we normally have to get. Now, what, we, what we're supposed to do here is actually pay the clam. It puts the catapult on the ground and we launch up here as Patrick and do this whole puzzle. That's why there's no text box for Barnacle Boy here because SpongeBob isn't supposed to be up here. As you can see, we can't hit these buttons. Can't do anything up here, really. But in theory, if we were to do this, we'd just jump down here after and switch to Patrick and then do the challenge here. That's the clam we have to pay, by the way. So you get on this catapult normally in the run. You pay the clam. Just like this. But with exploits and frame perfect jumps, we can actually get up here. And that's the conclusion of my glitch exhibition for SGDQ. Hope you guys enjoyed. And that's really all I have to say. Um, it'd be really cool to play this game again in GDQ. I had a lot of fun last time. I think it did pretty well. So, yeah, that's it. Peace, guys.